Vehicle wiring faults driving you crazy. Unable to trace the root cause. Don't know where to start. Well, I'm going to show you the best methods of how to safely and accurately test for faults with a vehicle's wiring and connectors and how to fix them so you can get back on the road in no time. Don't forget to smash the like and subscribe buttons to learn more automotive tips. Hi guys, I'm Tim and whether you're an aspiring automotive technician or a seasoned pro, you'll know there is one thing that everyone recommends to do when attempting to diagnose the cause of an electrical fault on a vehicle. Check your wiring. Well, that's all well and good. But it doesn't mean you should just give it a once over and a few taps. It also involves checking the electrical integrity of the wire and quality of its connectors and terminals. While these might seem simple enough, doing them incorrectly can mean potentially damaging the sensitive electrical systems that keep modern cars running. But before we jump right into the do's and don'ts of diagnosis, let's quickly have a closer look at the anatomy of wiring and connectors in an automotive electrical system. All the wiring in a vehicle will be made up of multiple tiny copper strands surrounded by an insulating thermoplastic outer layer. The copper acts as the conductor for the electrical current traveling from the battery. And the outer layer protects these strands from heat, moisture, and from shorting to any other conductive material. Multiple wires are usually needed for various components within a vehicle. So for organization, they are grouped together in looms. And at the end of these looms are connectors, which join sections of wire together. Inside these connectors, individual wires are attached to terminals which act as the endpoints of the wires and connect to corresponding pins on a plug, providing a secure connection. Now the major thing that can go wrong with wiring is damage to the insulating protective layer surrounding the copper strands. In an automotive system, heat and vibration can wear this protective layer down and cause moisture to get into the copper strands, causing a high resistance for the electrical current going through the wire. This causes all sorts of problems with the electrical components on a vehicle and can sometimes be very difficult to see with the naked eye, especially when looking at thick wiring looms that snake here, there and everywhere. This is why it is important to know how to properly test the electrical integrity of each wire in a safe and accurate way. And the best practice for this is back probing. Back probing involves using a multimeter equipped with a pin or back pin probe and inserting it next to a wire on the rear of a connector in order to investigate the wire's integrity. This testing method is king in the automotive diagnostic world as it doesn't risk any damage to the wire's insulating layer or terminal, and you don't have to remove any connectors to carry it out. This is especially beneficial now that modern vehicles use larger connectors with more terminals, which can be from multiple different systems within the vehicle. So live testing with everything powered up and connected is a lot easier. To carry out an effective back probe test, you will first need to remove the back cover from the connector to expose the rear of the affected wires terminal. Then with your pin probe attached to your multimeter, carefully slide the probe down the side of the wire, ensuring it doesn't damage the wire insulation or any weatherproof seal. The pin will usually be able to be inserted further at a certain point due to the orientation of the terminal within the connector so it is worth trying to insert the probe at at least two points on the side of the wire to determine where the terminal is. You may want to carry out a back probe test on a known working wire first in order to properly determine the orientation of the terminals on the connector so you can confirm you are getting an accurate reading when testing the suspect wire. So now you know how to back probe. Let's look at how you can use this technique to identify what kind of fault is affecting a suspect wire. These can usually be categorized into three main circuit failures, a short, an open, or high resistance. High resistance is usually caused by corrosion of the internal copper strands, poor terminal contact, or overheating damage to the wire caused by high current draw. To test for this, turn your multimeter to ohms and check the continuity of the suspected wire. For a standard 12 gauge automotive wire, the resistance should be less than 1, based on the assumption that it should have a resistance of less than 0.026 ohms per meter of wire. Another way of diagnosing high resistance in a wire is to conduct a voltage drop test. This is especially beneficial when diagnosing damage to a wire caused by high current draw. And it is a better way to test for resistance because you are testing with everything powered up and functioning. To do this, ensure the vehicle is running and you have put the battery under load by turning accessories on such as the aircon and radio. Turn your multimeter to volts DC and back probe either end of the wire at each connector. 
You shouldn't see more than 0.2 volts on most automotive 12 gauge whites, but it is worth consulting your manufacturer's specifications before condemning the loop. An open circuit can be diagnosed again by checking continuity of the wiring, but instead of getting a high resistance reading, you will see OL or open circuit on the multimeter. These faults are caused by a complete break in the wiring caused by severe corrosion, damage from an external overload, or from general wear and tear over time. The other causes of an open circuit could be due to poor terminal tension. A short circuit occurs when the copper wire strands of two or more different circuits touch each other directly, causing the electrical current to flow through a different path than intended and resulting in a surge of electrical current. They can occur either when a damaged live or current carrying wire makes contact with a damaged ground or low reference wire, which is called a short to ground or when one current carrying wire makes contact with another out of the intended circuit path, which is called a short to voltage. To test for a short in an automotive circuit, you should set your multimeter to volt DC and back probe the affected wire and test it against either a known good ground or a supply voltage, depending on the wire in question. If you get a reading outside of the desired range, then isolate the suspect wire from the rest of the circuit and retest. In this example, set your multimeter to ohms and perform a continuity test between the negative side of the battery and the affected wire. As this wire has been removed from the terminal, there should be no continuity between it and the battery ground. So if there is any resistance displayed, then you can assume the wire is shorted. Now you know how to back probe and find a fault in your wiring, but how do you fix it? Well, here you have a few options. You can either completely remove and replace a damaged wire if access is easy enough, or cut out the damaged section of wiring. Bear in mind that every time you cut and rejoin a wire, you're creating a potential point of weakness for ingress to enter. So ensuring you are properly repairing any damage is pivotal. There are a few methods of rejoining a wire, but start by cutting each side of the damaged wire using precision side cutters to get a clean cut. And then strip each end of the wire using appropriate sized wire strippers. Now this is where the methods of repair differ, and these can be affected by the amount of slack you have with a wire or the space you are working with. A crimp sleeve is the easier method of repair as they are straightforward to use and provide more slack to a wire. The two important things to remember when using these are, one, use a good crimping tool, such as a ratchet crimper, to ensure the connection is solid and even, and two, always use a heat shrink cover as a crimp sleeve isn't weatherproof. The other method to repair a broken wire, which we would recommend, is to solder it back together. The important thing here is to make sure you are twisting the wires together tightly to create a strong joint. Then apply the soldering iron to the joint, followed by the solder, and allow it to flow all over the connection. This will create a joint which has a solid and reliable electrical connection, and it is the best practice when repairing wires. Always remember to apply a heat shrink sleeve to keep the repair safe from the elements. Now, damaged wiring is only one half of what can be faulty within a wire. The second thing to check for is terminal tension and connector corrosion. The corrosion is fairly simple to spot. Just remove the connector and visually inspect both ends for any crusty buildup or discoloration. Terminal tension tests involve a little more know-how and the correct tools. So before you start, you will need the correct size terminal drag tool for the connector you are working on. Kits usually come with tools of various different sizes, so make sure you are using the correct one to get a reliable reading. Insert the drag tool into the affected terminal and slowly pull it out. There should be a noticeable resistance or drag as you remove it if the terminal tension is good. If the tool is removed easily or it has a noticeable amount of wiggle room, then you will need to replace or retension the terminal. To do this, you will firstly need to remove the terminal from the connector. This can be a slightly different process depending on the connector, but the main steps are the same. So start by removing the connector from the corresponding plug. If you haven't done so already, remove the back cover of the connector to expose the back of the wires. This may require removing the locking mechanism, especially on larger connectors. Then remove any secondary lock or terminal position assurance device from the front side of the connector to expose and free up the terminals. Different connectors have different sized terminals with different locking mechanisms so you will need to make sure you have the correct terminal removal tool for the job and know which side to approach the terminal's locking latch from. 
press the release tool into the terminal's locking latch and wriggle the wire free out of the back of the connector. At this point, you can either remove and replace the terminal with a new one or attempt to retension the faulty terminal. Again, this process may differ depending on the design, but having the correct tools is key. And there we have it. We hope you enjoyed our crash course on automotive electrical wiring diagnosis and repair. Let us know if you would like to see more videos like this in the comments, and don't forget to like and subscribe to help out the channel. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time.